Why is belly fat so stubborn and how to lose it? In just 10 minutes, you're going to know what makes belly fat so tough to lose and exactly what to do to get rid of it once and for all using three simple scientifically backed steps. The exact same three steps I used to make this transformation happen. These are two adipocytes, also known as fat cells. They are the cells that are primarily composed of adipose tissue, specialized in storing energy as fat. Fat cells contain two types of receptors for catecholamines that are dramatically opposed in its function. These are also known as alpha and beta receptors, and while the physiology is quite complex, it boils down to this. Alpha receptors hinder lipolysis, and beta receptors trigger it. One of the primary reasons why certain fat stores like belly fat are so stubborn is that the fat cells themselves are very resistant to mobilization. They contain more alpha receptors than beta. And this was proved by the paper published by Galitsky and colleagues. As you can see, adipocyte A contains more beta receptors than B, making it more susceptible to catecholamines in being able to utilize its energy from fatty acids. Now that you know the difference between certain fat stores, let's look at some strategies for defeating its defenses and burning it away. But before we dive into the three steps, take one second, do me the favor, and hit the like button on your phone or on your desktop. This video helps so many people looking for these three steps. If you're new to the channel, subscribe and hit the like button. It's free. Step 1. The Diet Utilize a moderately aggressive caloric deficit. For the purpose of this video, I've used a macro calculator that I've linked in the description. It's a good place to start to calculate your own macros if you're a beginner. Plugging in my details, an age of 27, a height of 5'9", which is 174 centimeters, a body weight of 186.5 pounds, which is 84.5 kilograms, at the start of my cut, I would consider myself very active and choosing two pounds per week as an aggressive deficit. It gives me these macros, however, this year at the start of my cut I chose macros for one pound per week which finally gave me these macros 224 grams of protein 297 carbs and 67 grams of fat but let me show you what I ate week to week one of the diet the macros are exactly 190 grams of protein 350 grams of carbs and 50 grams of fat the diet consisted of one scoop of VHP labs isopept protein for my micronutrient base, I also included 500 grams of watermelon, 50 grams of muesli, 500 grams of rice, beans and turkey bowl, 500 grams of pumpkin, 160 grams of oats, 6 caramel rice cakes, 2 packets of iceberg lettuce, 500 grams of 96% lean ground beef, and 140 grams of protein ice cream. This diet was perfect for me. And as you can see, I tracked everything using an app called MyFitnessPal. Over the course of the next few weeks, I decreased the portions. Let me show you. In week two, the macros were 190 grams of protein, 330 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. All I did was remove 100 grams of watermelon and I halved the amount of muesli to 25 grams of muesli. Week 3 to 6, we had 190 grams of protein, 310 grams of carbs, and 50 grams of fat. We changed the macros in week 7 to 185 grams of protein, 300 grams of carbs, and 45 grams of fat. In week 8, we moved it to 185 grams of protein, 250 carb, and 45 grams of fat. In week 9, we moved it to 185 grams of protein, 230 carbs, and 45 fats. Week 10, 185 grams of protein, 200 carb, and fats at 45 grams. Week 11 to 12, 185 grams of protein, carbs at 175, and fat at 40. In week 13, 185 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, and 40 grams of fat. Step 2. Fasted resistance training and cardio. Research shows that exercising in a fasted state increases both lipolysis and fat oxidation rates. Horowitz and colleagues showed that when you exercise with your insulin at baseline level, your body is able to both mobilize and burn more fat during your workout than when your insulin levels are elevated after a meal. Research shows that the blood flow in the abdominal region is increased by 50% when you're in a fasted state, which helps you burn the stubborn fat in the region. More fat was burned overall training in a fasted state as you can see from these graphs.
My training week looked like this. Monday, push, which I worked out chest, shoulders and triceps. On Tuesday, I would work out my back and biceps and on Wednesday would be legs and then I would repeat the cycle and Sunday I would take off. For my free push-pull legs program, you can click the link in the description, scroll to the bottom of my site and you'll find my free version there of my training program. All I ask is leave the video a like, that's all the support I can get. I absolutely love you guys. However, if you want to take it to the next level, as you see in the app, you can also find my program on my site. Tip number one, I highly advise you do training before cardio as it's more optimal for fat loss. The best type of cardio is high intensity interval training or HIIT for short. It is a method of exercising where you alternate between periods of almost an all out intensity and a low intensity for recovery. For example, this study conducted by the University of Western Ontario found that people lost more fat doing 4 to 6 30 second sprints with a 4 minute rest period and 60 minutes of inclined treadmill walking. If you do the math here, that's pretty impressive. 17 to 27 minutes of high intensity interval training resulted in more fat loss than 60 minutes of traditional bodybuilder cardio. Treadmill. So this was my breakdown week to week. Week one to two, we did three sessions of cardio at 30 minutes and taking 10,000 steps. Week two to four, three sessions of cardio at 40 minutes taking 12,000 steps. Week four to six, we increased it to four sessions a week at 45 minutes, taking 13,000 steps. At this point, we maintained my steps at this rate throughout. We then changed week six to eight to five sessions of cardio at 45 minutes. Week eight to 10 at six sessions of cardio at 45 minutes. Week 10 to 12, we did seven sessions at 45 minutes. Week 12 to 14, we did seven sessions at 50 minutes. And week 14 to 16, we did seven sessions at 60 minutes. Step three, my top three supplements proven to improve fat loss. Fat burners. Fat burners by far have the worst reputation due to how its products have been marketed by the media as the magic pill for fat loss. That being said, there are supplements out there that assist in weight loss. Granted that your caloric expenditure is high due to your activity and your caloric input is low through diet, fat burners can facilitate both of these variables. By far the most important ingredient in any fat burner is caffeine. And as we've detailed before, we can see an improvement in physical strength and endurance resulting in a greater caloric output. Numerous studies have also shown that caffeine stimulates both metabolic rates and fat oxidation. This product in particular, OxyShirt, at first gave me a sentiment of mild disapproval. But after using the product myself, its benefits convinced me enough that it will forever be a staple in my weight loss stack. Besides its weight loss capabilities, mainly due to caffeine, I noticed improvements in the rate of weight loss, cognitive function and my mood throughout my 16 weeks utilizing OxyShred. You need to know the facts. The five main ingredients in pre-workouts are caffeine, theanine, arginine, beta-alanine and citrulline malate. That being said, all of them have proven benefits, however most potent ingredient that confers to most of the pre-workout effects is caffeine. Caffeine is a powerful stimulant and can be used to improve physical strength, endurance and minimizing fatigue. It's classified as a nootropic because it sensitizes neurons and provides mental stimulation. It has also been proven to be one of the best weight loss supplements. Yohembine. Yohembine is a chemical extracted from species of an African plant, Yohemb. Studies show that Yohembine can accelerate fat loss by blocking the activity of the alpha receptors in fat cells. This enables your body to reduce fat stores faster and is particularly useful as you get leaner and are battling with stubborn fat holdouts. There is a slight catch though with Yohembine. Elevated insulin levels negate its weight loss effects. If you want to reap its fat loss benefits, you want to use it when you're in a fasted state. Yohembine's benefits don't stop there though. It does more than help you lose fat faster. Research shows that Yohembine also improves exercise performance. It's particularly effective at fighting off physical fatigue and increasing time to exhaustion. And that is the end of the video. I hope that you did enjoy it. All the links that I have mentioned I've put down in the description, they will help you. All the things that are here is basically a starter pack for fat loss. So if you're trying to make a transformation in 2020 completely free and just with your own hard work, use the links in the description. I would appreciate a like. If you're new, welcome to the channel, subscribe. And let me know if you have any questions in the comment section down below. I have a 99.9% .9 rate of replying to all comments. 
but I'll leave it there. I'll see you guys in the next one.